in the ancient Perak Monastery, hidden away from the cycles of strife and conflict. The Glauxian monks honored the owl god Glaux through study and quiet contemplation. Since the war against Surta and his pure ones many years ago, the monks have maintained a constant vigil across the land, forever watching for anything that may threaten their life of peace and tranquility. On this day, it was the job of a young acolyte named Gratia to take his place at the lookout post. As Gratia kept watch, an unsettling feeling began to well inside his gizzard. He could sense something was wrong. Suddenly, without warning or sound, the hag's fiends attacked. The hideous creatures stormed into the monastery, ruthlessly eliminating every soul in their path. With the cries of his brethren echoing through the hollows, Gretia tried valiantly to save them, but it was too late. The monastery was lost. Managing to escape, Gretia was plagued with feelings of guilt and confusion. How could he have missed the invaders? Rumors began to spread about his negligence, with many branding him a coward and a traitor. Unable to bear the shame, Gretia isolated himself from the world, wandering alone in search for some inner peace. Finding a second chance at life and a means to move forward from his past, Gretia stopped his solitary wandering to settle down and start a family with his mate, Lyja. Unfortunately, this time of joy was to be short-lived. On a fateful night, as Gretia and Lyja's firstborn emerged from its egg, a group of vicious owls raided their hollow, and the two parents fell before them. Only the timely arrival of a guardian chaw prevented the hatchling from sharing their fate. The guardian swiftly carried the hatchling to the safety of the gaul tree, and affectionately named him Shard, due to a piece of eggshell they found clinging to his downy coat. Many moons later, Shard studied hard to become a guardian himself, but Gratia's legacy, however, had left a stain upon his son. A chance to redeem the family's honor arrived during Shard's final year of training. Shard! What in Glox's name are you doing here? You're not a guardian yet. I... I can help, Alomir. I have to defend the Great Tree. You're going to get yourself killed, youngin. Stay close and out of trouble. Are you even listening? Huh? Night dreaming again, are we? <laughs> Just as useless as his father. Uh... Enough. Stop it, the two of you. Shameful. Not that I should be surprised. The way discipline has been allowed to slide around here in recent years. For once, Alamir. It seems we are in agreement. However hateful the speech, a guardian never answers words with talents. Yes, as a rib. Meet me in my hollow after class to be assigned your flint mops. Pardon me, Easel Rib, but he is my student. Certainly. But you've been rather harried lately with all the duties expected from you. Whereas I seem to have nothing but time on my talons these days. See you there, Shard. Don't keep me waiting. It's time to light those torches. I've even brought in the Gaul fire carriers to help you with this flint mob. So hop to it. Easel Rib, the rescue chaw found a band of outlets approaching the tree, but some crows have blocked the way. We've got to get them through somehow. Shard, there's a change of plans. I need you to head out and clear the crows so the chaw can get through. Parzival will accompany you if you need any help. What? No, not him. This is no time to get choosy about wingmen. Get going. Heh, <laughs> he did better than I thought. Didn't get us killed at least. We all soon learned the owlets we'd saved were no ordinary owlets. They had traveled a long time 
and Sauron, the Barn Owl, who spoke for the group, told the Parliament a harrowing tale of desperation. It claimed they had been abducted by the Pure Ones, the same Pure Ones that I had fought so long ago. They took them with countless others to a grim place known as the Saint Aegeolius, home for orphaned owls, where they were put to work picking through discarded pellets, searching for tiny metallic bits they called flex. For what purpose? It is not yet known. Alomir doubted the young owlets. So if I'm to understand this correctly, the Pure Ones have risen from the dead, are building a slave army of moon-blinked owlets, and are planning to conquer the world with magical pellet debris. I was quick to defend the integrity of these owlets. I knew in my gizzard what they spoke was true. There was no dishonesty in Sauron, no deception, nothing but an earnest, sublime heart. It was then our King Boron spoke. He decreed that Alamir would seek out Saint Aegeolius and discover if the Pure Ones had truly returned. The Parliament was adjourned and Alamir set out on his task. I, however, had other plans. For a violation of the peace so blatant, so powerful, how could any owl sit idly by? Immediate action would be needed. of foolishness not to act more decisively now that we have proof. Ah, good of you both to come so quickly. We need to prepare and we haven't a moment to waste. Sir, prepare for what? Why, your departure on your missions, of course. But we can't go on missions. We're not even full guardians yet. Just what do you think all those flint mops were? I was testing you the whole time. And you passed with flying colors. You stick close to Shard and follow his lead. Me? Follow him? But Alomir and his jaw are already searching. Why send us? It's simple, really. I trust you, and that's the key. You both have the gizzard for the job. I know you'll do the tree proud. Dry as a bone, and swathed in scorching heat. Vast Kunia bakes neath the sun's constant beat. Is it possible for living things to abound, where rarely a drop or shade is found? In rocky nooks, they can and do. And under scrub clutching morning dew, and when the breeze cools the land at night, multitudes crawl, or with wings take flight. Excerpt from A Gazetteer of the Owl Kingdoms by Lies of Keel. Sauron mentioned that bats were working with the Pure Ones. In the desert of Kunir, an eagle named Streak has been investigating rumors that bats may be involved in the disappearance of owlets in the area. Unfortunately, Streak himself has also now gone missing. Go into the desert and find out what has happened to him. You have my eternal gratitude, friends. My mate is away, and I was foolishly patrolling on my own when these so-called Pure Ones attacked me. I'm Shard, and this is Parzival. Ezorib sent us to see if the stories about Owlets missing were true. Unfortunately, yes. The Pure Ones are involved, and so are those vicious night creatures, the Bats. As payment for their loyalty, the Pure Ones have been giving any non-Taito Owlets they find to the Bats. The Owlets are being kept in their secret hideout, somewhere in Kunir. There are, however, Bat sanctuaries in the area. Perhaps we can get some information out of the bats located there. Let them escape. The Pure Ones and Bats are working together even more closely than I thought. They must be harboring owlets within the Bat hideout. We must find a way to rescue them.
Although we found the bat hideout, some bats are still sneaking outlets through the canyons. You'll need to get in there and rescue them. It seems quite clear that this will not stop unless we take the fight directly to the bats. Shall we? We must find a way to force the bats out of hiding. It would be foolish to fly in there with all of them inside. So then... We need to find a way to get them out into the open. I'll wager a few well-placed hot coals should do the trick. Aha! Let's get to it then. Our rescue of the outlets in the canyons was just the beginning. We need to rescue the outlets kept in the bat hideout. Well, we flushed out those bats, all right, but we didn't account for their chieftain. We're gonna need to take him out, or those captive outlets are done for. With the bats defeated, Shard and his comrades freed a prisoner due to be drained. He was a curious soul, a wandering hermit named Uriah, who had sought solitary meditation in the desert. He confirmed what they suspected that the bats were collaborating closely with the owls that called themselves the Pure Ones. He pointed out to them the curious metallic bits the bats referred to as flex, which the Pure Ones coveted. Then Uriah looked directly at Shard and said, You know, lad, you're the very image of an owl I met on a visit to Perrock when I was scarcely out of the egg. An upright owl he was, yeah, noble up bearing, and with an aura of the valiant about him. His name was Gratir. And as that sank in, he added, I thank you for my life. And now I wish to be one of consequence. I would be your wingman in this struggle, if you'll have me in my current state. And so they all returned to the Gahul tree to make Uriah well and to share what they had learned. Good Glaucks. The Pure Ones are on the attack. They're almost upon our headquarters. There's no choice left but to evacuate. The headquarters is under attack. We need your help, Sport. Take the carrier team and guide them safely to the new headquarters. Some of our new allies have found themselves lost within the storm. We've set up some torches to help guide them towards the resistance headquarters. Counting on you to light them, sport. We've put out a call to our fellow Tidos to join the resistance. The pure ones may have struck a blow, but many want to save what's left of our home. They're going to need some help, though, finding our new headquarters. Looks like they've all made it. Well done. But don't tuck yourself into your hollow just yet. The storm may be letting up, but we got bigger trouble than a few raindrops coming our way.
pure ones have been setting fires all around Taito Forest in the hopes of completely eradicating the resistance. We've assembled a team to put out these fires, but they will need protecting. Destroying the Pure One's fortification is our only chance for peace in Taito. I'll need you to go in with the fire carriers to take out their defenses. Only then will we be able to get in and take down their fort. Go in with the fire carriers and take out their defenses. We'll keep the rest of them busy. The first thing you need to do is escort the fire carriers to the fort. Don't leave them unprotected. Taito Forest is free once again. Thanks for all your help, Guardian. Too exhausted to follow, and with too many wounded to tend to, Shard and Bryony felt it best to let the surviving Pure Ones flee to parts unknown. They'd been given a sound thrashing and would not be back soon. Bryony bid Shard a sincere thanks for his efforts, and before he left, she also gave him a friendly word of warning. You know, Sport, when the Pure Ones was holding me prisoner, I heard tell of someone they called the Guardian. Seems this bloke's been feeding him info from up in that tree of yours. I'd best be watching me tail feathers, if I was you. Shard then flew the long journey back to the island of Hul. The whole way, his heart hung heavy with this disturbing report. Past the ice narrows in the Everwinter Sea, amongst blue-white bergs gleaming brilliantly, lies a frigid land of warriors brave, shedding senseless blood on frozen wave. Others, choosing a life of contemplation, seek wisdom in the icy desolation. Northern contrasts are stunning and sharp, like black razor talons plucking a silver harp. Excerpt from a Gazetteer of the Owl Kingdoms, by Lies of Keel. I think I see the Glauxian Brotherhood retreat up there in the distance. I'll be glad to get out of this freezing wind. You know, my ancestor, Strix Caraldo, once stayed aloft through an entire night and a day flying from Keel Bay to the Ice Talons. Too bad she's not here. We'd have more flying and less jabbering. Are you trying to say I'm holding us up? I reckon I could reach the retreat before you, if I had a mind to. Is that a challenge? Well, if you promise to remain quiet the rest of the way, you're on. The Pure Ones are going to extreme lengths to collect these little metallic bits called flax. But why? Our ignorance is our weakness. Perhaps the Glauxian Brotherhood in the North might shed some light on the situation. I knew you were good, but I didn't know you were that good. And you're still talking. <sighs> now, let's see what we can find out about Flex. Upon arrival at the Glauxian Brotherhood retreat, Chard's hopes were dashed to discover what he sought was not to be found there. Knowledge of these Flex was lost when Perok fell. But a shard turned, ready to depart the retreat. The monk took pause, then continued. There is, however, an elderly hermit named Cormac, who dwells in some old ruins not far from here. He once studied at Perok and might be convinced to help you. But be watchful. A group of monks went to visit him weeks ago, and when they did not return, a few of our younger brethren left to investigate. Neither group has been heard from, and high winds at this time of the year have hampered our search efforts. Shard pledged to do all he could. Cormac's young brethren may be in trouble. I'll need you to travel to the ruins and check on their situation. But be heedful, young guardian. Look out for anything that may seem suspicious. That's strange. There's a group of bats flying in the same direction we are. 
and they're carrying some sort of bundle. Hmm. The hags fiends will make short work of them. The bats have brought with them unwelcome guests. Dispose of the intruders. What in Klaus's name were those horrid things? I don't know, but they definitely took pleasure in trying to hurt us. We should keep moving. There may be more of them around. That old owl! He looks injured. Don't worry about me. It's the young monks that need your help. The hags fiends have taken them back to what used to be my home. I just escaped from there. You must be Cormac. What exactly are hags fiends? Hideous crossbreeds of owls and crows. Or so we believe. But that's not important right now. Please, you have to rescue them. It appears the situation is far worse than we had thought. I can barely believe it. But these creatures may be the hag's fiends returned. I fear that Cormac and our brethren are in their clutches. Find them and rescue them, young guardian. It's been ages since I've seen such selfless bravery. Perhaps we can save the rest. You see, take heed of those tall pillars, for they contain large concentrations of flex. They'll confound your gizzards if you get too close. That's what's keeping the monks grounded. We have to bring down the pillars to set them free. The hags fiends have been taking monks to mine in their flex facility. The time for peace has passed. We must rescue them. We need to get into the facility and take down those flex pillars. Only then will my brethren be free. Fly, my friends! You are free! We must leave this place before more hags fiends come! Hmm... Friends, I do not like the look of that fog coming in. You may have rescued my brethren, but unless the Hags Fiend Queen is defeated, the abductions will continue, and you can bet their next target will be the retreat itself. <coughs> I would not have believed that victory had I not seen it with my own two eyes. Well, I suppose by now I shouldn't be surprised. Come! Let us help the wounded back to the Brotherhood. Back at the retreat, there was much to discuss. Bats and hags fiends working together, with Flex in the midst of it all. The breadth of the Pure One's plans was broad indeed. Just then, the old hermit Cormac approached. That was a fine bit of flying you did today, Shard. Your father would have been proud. When the shock had worn off the young owl's face, he continued. Yes. I was there with him at Perak. Don't believe the lies. He was vigilant and he fought bravely. But the flicks the Hags fiends carry can confound any owl's gizzard, as you'll see. We surmised it was an unknown traitor who let the Hags fiends in and gave them the flicks. But Grittier never forgave himself. He discarded his battle claws here at this monastery vowing never to take them up again. I attempted to follow his peaceful example, even opening a dialogue with the Hags fiends who dwell in the frigid region. But there is a greater tide of evil at work. And my efforts failed. Hmm. It would seem the time for your father's idealism has not yet arrived. Cormac produced a tarnished but magnificent set of battle claws. Here, these were his. Take them. 
and use them to restore the peace. While Shard and his small band were returning from their travels, it was then that Alomir returned to the tree. It appeared his mission had been a success, although it was more dire than even I had expected. Within his talons, he carried a moon-blinked owlet, a title, young Soren's sister Eglantine. Alomir told a tale of pure one treachery. His wingmen had not survived the attack, but Alomir had escaped and had been able to wrestle this young owlet from the pure ones before he did. Suddenly, with the treachery of the pure ones confirmed, the parliament before unconvinced of Soren's story, called all the guardians to battle. I feared we did not know enough of the pure one's plot, but my duty called me to stand beside my fellow guardians and right yet another wrong. When Shard returned, he discovered that all the guardians had taken up arms. And there, within my hollow, a note from me left him with a fateful choice. Dear Shard, it has come to this. War. The other Guardians and I have rushed into the heart of the darkness to make our stand against this pure one threat. My gizzard stirs. I do not know what we will find there, and I fear for the worst. There is no doubt that we will need you and the knowledge you have gained from your journeys. Join us when you are ready, for we'll need every battle claw we can muster. Shard felt frustrated at being left behind, and he became doubly so when he saw Sauron and his comrades flying off to find the Guardians. Following them seemed the only option. And so it was they found themselves headed towards that baleful land of rocky spires known as the Beaks. As we've journeyed through the kingdoms, you have continued to prove your mettle as a guardian again and again. The battle in the beaks will truly test us, Shard. I will proudly fight by your side, my friend. What's that up ahead? I don't know. Could be a fortress. Let's fly closer to get a better look. Shard! Bats! They're everywhere! I'm starting to feel strange. I'm sorry, Parzival. I ran you headlong into that trap. Guess I was fooling myself. I'm not much of a leader. Nonsense. You made sure I got out of it alive. That's what a leader does. Come on, let's find the Guardians. The trap was sprung. The Pure Ones had made a weapon of their collected flex. With our gizzards confounded by the device, we could no longer fly, and plummeted to the ground. I saw a figure suddenly descend from the sky, coals glowing brightly from his talons. Sauron, the young owlet, soared down onto the trap's winch. The coals hit their target, and wood and rope burned. I saw Shard and his band following close behind. They had cleared Sauron's way, and we were once again free. Shard, glad to have you back. But there's no time for lengthy reunions, I'm afraid. We need to take out the Pure One's defenses to open the Stone Palace. Do it any way you can. But hurry, or our chores will never make it through. Now that Sauron has taken down the Fleck Trap, we can get in and take out the Pure One defenses. This will allow the Guardians to reach the Stone Palace. They're counting on us to do our part. Alamir? A traitor filthier than rack drops. Oh, such untoward speech. Gretir would not be proud. What do you know about my father? Oh, we were well acquainted at Perak. <gasps> Surprised? I thought with all of your snooping, you would have guessed by now. You murdered them all. My father, my mother, 
In any event, the pure ones will soon emerge victorious, and Grettir's bloodline will be silenced forever, just as he was. I need to find Alomir. I have to... Forget him for now. See that signal tower? Take out a few of its supports, and it'll topple to shore. Then the pure ones will have minimal reinforcements entering the battlefield. Alamir must be brought to justice, but our duty as guardians must come first. We need as minimal a resistance from the pure ones as possible, and destroying that signal tower will ensure this. Good luck, Shard. Good job, but the pure ones are putting up an unexpectedly stiff defense. If only we could slow them down somehow. Is there a way to destroy the palace from the inside? Aha. Their forge. Of course. Destroying their furnace should be enough to rock the palace foundations. They won't be able to arm themselves. Hurry. You! Not escape from here. Can't you see, Sharp? The pure ones will win this war. Never. Shard, are you all right? Alomir is dead. Justice has been served. I used to think honor and justice were ideals worth fighting for. But they didn't bring me peace. Ah, but they are worth fighting for. But only for what they give, for what they protect. Like truth and fellowship. Spoken like a true guardian. So that's it? The Pure Ones are gone? Defeated, perhaps, but not gone. It's more than we can hope that such intolerance will stay buried forever. The Owlets of St. Ejolius still await us. Let's go, Guardian. We are the Eyes of the Night. The silence within the wind. We are the talons through the fire. The shield that guards the innocent. We shall defend the meek and vanquish the evil. We are the guardians of Gahul.
while Shard and his small band were returning from their travels. It was then that Alomir returned to the tree. It appeared his mission had been a success, although it was more dire than even I had expected. Within his talons, he carried a moon-blinked owlet, a Taito, young Soren's sister Eglantine. Alomir told a tale of pure one treachery. His wingmen had not survived the attack, but Alomir had escaped and had been able to wrestle this young owlet from the pure ones before he did. Suddenly, with the treachery of the pure ones confirmed, the parliament before unconvinced of Soren's story, called all the guardians to battle. I feared we did not know enough of the pure ones plot. But my duty called me to stand beside my fellow guardians and right yet another wrong. When Shard returned, he discovered that all the guardians had taken up arms. And there, within my hollow, a note from me left him with a fateful choice. Dear Shard, it has come to this. War. The other Guardians and I have rushed into the heart of the darkness to make our stand against this Pure One threat. My gizzard stirs. I do not know what we will find there, and I fear for the worst. There is no doubt that we will need you and the knowledge you have gained from your journeys. Join us when you are ready, for we'll need every battle claw we can muster. Shard felt frustrated at being left behind. And he became doubly so when he saw Sauron and his comrades flying off to find the Guardians. Following them seemed the only option. And so it was they found themselves headed towards that baleful land of rocky spires known as the Beaks. As we've journeyed through the kingdoms, you have continued to prove your mettle as a guardian again and again. The battle in the beaks will truly test us, Shard. I will proudly fight by your side, my friend. What's that up ahead? I don't know. Could be a fortress. Let's fly closer to get a better look. Shard! Bats! They're everywhere! I'm starting to feel strange. I'm sorry, Parzival. I ran you headlong into that trap. Guess I was fooling myself. I'm not much of a leader. Nonsense. You made sure I got out of it alive. That's what a leader does. Come on, let's find the Guardians. The trap was sprung. The Pure Ones had made a weapon of their collected flex. With our gizzards confounded by the device, we could no longer fly and plummeted to the ground. I saw a figure suddenly descend from the sky, coals glowing brightly from his talons. Sauron, the young owlet, soared down onto the trap's winch. The coals hit their target and wood and rope burned. I saw Shard and his band following close behind. They had cleared Sauron's way and we were once again free. Shard, glad to have you back. But there's no time for lengthy reunions, I'm afraid. We need to take out the Pure One's defenses to open the Stone Palace. Do it any way you can. But hurry, or our chores will never make it through. Now that Sorin has taken down the Fleck Trap, we can get in and take out the Pure One defenses. This will allow the Guardians to reach the Stone Palace. They're counting on us to do our part. Alamir? A traitor filthier than rack drops. Oh, such untoward speech. Gretir would not be proud. What do you know about my father? Oh, we were well acquainted at Perak. <gasps> Surprised? I thought with all of your snooping, you would have guessed by now. You murdered them all. My father, my mother. In any event, the Pure Ones will soon emerge victorious, and Grettir's bloodline will be silenced forever, just as he was.
I need to find Alomir. I have to... Forget him for now. See that signal tower? Take out a few of its supports, and it'll topple for sure. Then the pure ones will have minimal reinforcements entering the battlefield. Alamir must be brought to justice, but our duty as guardians must come first. We need as minimal resistance from the pure ones as possible, and destroying that signal tower will ensure this. Good luck, Shard. Good job, but the pure ones are putting up an unexpectedly stiff defense. If only we could slow them down somehow. Is there a way to destroy the palace from the inside? Aha. Their forge. Of course. Destroying their furnace should be enough to rock the palace foundations. They won't be able to arm themselves. Hurry. You! How? You will not escape from here! Can't you see, Shah? The pure ones will win this war! Never! God, are you all right? Alomir is dead. Justice has been served. I used to think honor and justice were ideals worth fighting for. But they didn't bring me peace. Ah, but they are worth fighting for. But only for what they give, for what they protect. Like truth and fellowship. Spoken like a true guardian. So that's it? The Pure Ones are gone? Defeated, perhaps, but not gone. It's more than we can hope that such intolerance will stay buried forever. The Owlets of St. Ejolius still await us. Let's go, Guardian. We are the eyes of the night. The silence within the wind. We are the talons through the fire. The shield that guards the innocent. We shall defend the meek and vanquish the evil. We are the guardians of Gahul. <laughs>